Welcome to Carver Conversations. I'm your host, Tiff Marchand from Night Carver Designs, and this is a Sabretooth podcast, and I am so excited to be here. Today on the show, we have Ryan Villiers from Canada. He's in Alberta, and he is an amazing chainsaw carver. He does pop culture icons. He can do very realistic animal carvings and uh, doesn't shy from having an imagination where he can blend both of those with one of his most recent ones. If you saw the full-size buffalo that we'll be talking about shortly, you're going to just see how creative this man can be. Ryan is currently on A Cut Above, which is on Discovery Canada, and it's a chainsaw carving show. So if you want to catch him in action, that's currently airing in Canada, and it will be going over to the States and other areas very soon. He does touch on it a bit, but there is no set date yet. I'm excited to see it. I can't wait to to see all these guys go and perform. And Ryan Cook, who we all know um, from his previous shows, is actually a host on the show. So it's very, very exciting. And uh, we were just glad that Ryan could make time to sit down and chat with us. If you're looking to grab some burrs today, head on over and use the code EM2CO to save 10% off your order and sign up for the newsletter on sabretooth.com and that'll save you 25% off. It's a newsletter that comes out once a month and on there you'll have that coupon and 24 hours to use it. They also share fun things, new toolkits that are coming out and different grits. So make sure you sign up for that newsletter and uh, enjoy the show. Love uh, that you have Jim Carrey in the background, <laughs> by the way. I, yeah, I did, uh, I did him just because I get kind of, you know, you get burnt out of doing other people's projects. So the odd time I'll do something for myself. Oh, perfect. So that one was for you. I was uh, I was scrolling your page and I was I was laughing because you know, I've been following you for God, it feels like forever. Um, and I remember, you know, obviously you doing that piece, but one of the first ones was like John Candy, you know, like, and like the hockey player. And um, I just was laughing as I was scrolling your page because I'm like, he has to be around the same age as me because we have such similar tastes and like pop culture icons. You know what I mean? Because I'm 40 myself and I'm like, he's I'm got 41. 40. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it's like gremlins. I mean, the gremlins yeah. piece that you did. I was just like, <sighs> that's in my basement. That's awesome. You yeah, could tell yeah. that had to be for you because it's like that had to take so long. And then the paint job that you did on it too. <laughs> so good. On the gremlin, that was one of my first ones. I, we did that at a at the, my saw dealership here in Edmonton. And when I kind of first started, they put on uh, kind of a mini competition for the weekend. There was just three of us just to get promotion. And that was, uh, I started it then and brought it home and finished it. Oh, that's awesome. I was, oh, geez, that would have been in 2017 or 18. Yeah, it was like when I first started. That's cool. Yeah, I like I went to the bottom of your page. I noticed that you had started with like relief sculpture, it looks like at first, like relief kind of, carvings did, a little. Yeah, I did like, I think three or four just hand tool carvings. And then uh, I, I was very impatient with that. And then I discovered the chainsaw and what it could do. <laughs> <laughs> what made you uh, start carving in the first place? Like where'd that desire come from? Uh, there was a TV program called Carver Kings. Seven mm-hmm. years ago. Uh, I think it was a spinoff of the Timber Kings. And okay. I saw, I think on an episode, Mark Culp, the famous Mark Culp was on it carving on an episode. And Pete Ryan. And I, I saw that. And I was immediately drawn to it. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And then, and that was on Timber Kings. And then it spun off to Carver Kings. And as soon as I saw what those guys were doing, yeah, I was hooked. It's like a disease, a good disease. I honestly think that's like one of those shows as well that got me into just like picking up stuff and, and power carving. Yeah, it's like, amazing. Right? It's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was cool. And, and now I'm uh, you know, friends with most of them now. Like, Isn't yeah, that crazy? Funny. Yeah, you look look up to them as mentors and, and that will still do obviously but it's just it's crazy how life works out yeah i mean you do a thing long enough you build to that goal and then all of a sudden they're like your co-workers you know it's, yeah, it's, so, it's so wicked i love it yeah yeah i feel the same way yeah this venture it's taken me to so many cool places and met so many cool people and yeah it's pretty amazing just to chunk wood and a chainsaw right it's, mm-hmm. it's 
it's hard to wrap my head around it sometimes. <laughs> what were you doing before you started making art? Were you in a whole different career path? Like, are you still doing that? Oh, no, I car full time. I was a heavy duty mechanic for about 14 years before this. Before that? Okay. And for me, it was like it was like a dead end job, you know, unhappy all the time. And mm -hmm. uh, so every spare moment I was at home or I had, I would be carving in the garage. And I got laid off one year. And I said, I'm going to make a full swing at this carving thing and see if I can make it work because life is too damn short to be unhappy. Yes. I'm going to yell it though. Preach because. I just, I, I just did it. I just went full time, like, you know, carver, artist, everything, you know? So like I was in the, the same thing at 16 years at a job that I hated. And I was just like, enough is enough. I'm not getting anywhere with this job. I have to get out of this. So yeah, 100%. yeah that's cool. Yeah. See? Yep. I mean, it's obviously it's risky, but you only live once. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Once. We all have bills. We all have children, families, you know, mm -hmm. people. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But if you don't try, you don't know. Yeah, and no. Work and persistence, right? It doesn't yeah. come over. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, like I was like, you know, I gave myself that goal. Like if I don't do this by 40, I'm just going to regret it for the rest of my life. And I will just continue to be miserable. So I'm like, I need to get out of this cycle. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. Thanks. Good for you too. I mean, it it is scary to take that jump and... Like you said, we all have families. We all have kids that we have to feed and houses that we have to pay for. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, the world revolves around money, but mm -hmm. uh, not everything in the long scheme. How yeah. soon did you start getting commissions from when you started carvings? And going, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to figure out how they did that, right? So I would go, I'd Google like let's say welcome there, and I'd find a cool pattern for fur or whatever, and I would try try to kind of copy that and see how they did it. And then from there, it just evolved. Uh, you know, you start making your own inventory and then mm -hmm. Facebook page and they started selling off there a little bit. But after that, for me, you you evolve into your own style. After mm -hmm. a long, right. And, uh, you know, trying to figure out different techniques and this and that. And uh, never stop learning. Never stop learning. No. I'm never satisfied with my carving. So maybe that's what gives me the push to do what I do kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just keep refining those skills. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I'll carve it and I'll pick it apart and hate it for a day or two. And when it's done, I leave it and then I go back and I go, oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm literally, I'm working on these uh, Ninja Turtles right now, right? I will not put Polly on those until the full 10 piece of like set is all carved. Because what if I like a detail that I added on one of them and I want to put it on all of them, you know, I'm <laughs> like, that's funny. Like, say, like this guy here. Yeah. So when I'm carving, when I'm facing a carving, I'm way better carving the left side of the face than mm. I am the right side. I, I struggle with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's the right side. I struggle with the left. It's just that part side so much better. And then I jump around and refine the other side. Yeah. It's like, oh, I like that better than that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, no, it's totally. Yeah. Midway through, all of a sudden, like everything could just shift. You're like, oh. <laughs> and so I think on the right side, and that's what that, I'm good at, you know, that part and the left side, a little bit of struggle on the other side of the brain. Uh, for your painting, is that something you just taught yourself as well as you were doing these? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the painting part was cool. The uh, I went and bought an airbrush kit and just started messing around, obviously. And yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of the process, honestly. Um, you know, in the carving world, it's frowned upon. A little bit like some people. Uh, I use glass eyes some too. Like I like to incorporate other materials the odd mm -hmm. time. Try to make the taxidermy bases. I'll add grass, you know, real sticks, rocks sometimes. Um, yeah, some people frown upon that, but there's no rules to this art form. Uh, exactly. Just do, you, do what you want. I mean, it, it's awesome. Everybody's got an awesome style, their own style. Uh, yeah, and I just happen to love painting. So I would say I'm biased. I, I much prefer one that's been painted because. Yeah. Like you could still let the grain th show through and you could tell it's out of wood. It just adds yeah. more to it. It's character. But there are other woods too that you put paint on it is a shame because there's lots of beautiful grains and lots of different woods up yeah. there. So whatever you like, right? Whatever yep. side you like. Exactly. Plus, yeah, like you said, each each project is going to dictate the way you finish it. So like yeah. if you are using that really nice wood, then yeah, you would just put a finish on it and call it a day, you know? But yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
for for your commissions are those the ones that like what kind of things are you getting commissioned right now because i'm kind of curious like what you make for yourself and what you're making for people uh well for myself like i said I, this guy i did last i think in january february I just you know it was kind of a slow time and i thought that's gonna be the mask that log um it's mostly animals right now i got a big commission i'm doing at the moment uh it involves Rambo. Now, a couple of years ago, I carved Rambo himself. Mm-hmm. And this year in October, I think Thanksgiving weekend in Canada, they're having the 40th anniversary of the filming in Hope, BC. And oh, that's a big, awesome. And I do believe some actors from that movie are coming to celebrate with it, but I've been commissioned to do another character from the movie, and it is uh, to be determined when I reveal it, which <laughs> Will be revealed at the uh, at the celebration, but I can't can't put much on the social media about it yet. What date is that for uh, Canada's Thanksgiving? That's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think first weekend of October. Okay. So after this, I can find the real date and I'll message it to you. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, ours is uh, like the second to third week of November usually. Yeah, That's yeah. why I was curious. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're. I don't even know when springtime is happening. Right? <laughs> I'm assuming most of your carvings you have. Well, it looks like you have a carving shed too, but do you like doing it outside or do you do it indoors mostly? Uh, I work out of my garage in the back door. It's only a 22 by 22 uh, space, but I do most of my carvings there. Uh, I do it. There's an acreage about 10 minutes from me where I do my big commissions like that Buffalo. Mm-hmm. I'm out there because he's just too big. But uh, yeah, I've got two locations where I can carve. Is that Buffalo? Is that uh, full size? like yeah yeah huge. yeah so, i had a uh, uh, blake mcfarlane on uh last week and we were talking about it because he just got commissioned to do one and i, I brought yours up because i'm like i think it is full size i'm like it's it's realistic but it's also cartoonish i'm like it's a pretty awesome mixture i love how you did it like just all the textures and the facial expression is crazy thank you the client wanted a disney-esque kind of looking uh, Buffalo. So that's what I came up with, you know, the bit of the realism of her and, you know, cartoon aspects in it. Um, yeah. So, well, I, what they gave me, they gave me the size of the space that they had for the car. Mm-hmm. Like, that's perfect. It fits perfectly in there. I just happen to have that up like that I'm looking at right now. And I'm like, it just, it's at home there. That's, that's awesome. Do you have other pieces in places like that, that you could go visit? Yeah, I did a, Oh, geez, like a Harry Anderson kind of Sasquatch last summer. Oh, with yes. Red, with the red shirt. That's at the same franchise store. And that one is in Montana. I think it, uh, what, I can't remember what the town it was. But that was in Montana and the Buffalo went to North Dakota. Awesome. It, it, it's at Shields, if you know that place. Mm-mm, never heard of it. It's like a sporting goods store, hunting a lot. Okay. Oh, so... When it came to um, power carving, you said you grabbed the chainsaw first. What led you into the burrs? Was it just because you had to find a way to do all those finishing details? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you kind of put your fingers out there and see what people are using for their details and stuff. And obviously, saber bits was the one that everybody was using, right? And, uh, yep. Yeah, just, I just followed the path of uh, getting saber bits like everybody else. All right. I know. I think I saw like Ryan Cook using them um, on, on one of the shows, you know, and I was just like, what is that green thing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, we uh, well, I was just on a TV program called The Cut Above. Mm-hmm. This spring. And I, I think it's going to be re- released in the U.S. October, November. OK. I, mean, we- I don't I don't like it's aired here. Episode two aired last night here in Canada. Mm hmm. Here in the UK, October, November, something like that is what we hear. It's a shame it wasn't all released at the same time. But, I know, uh, right? But that's okay. It's like little waves of excitement, right? Yeah, yeah. And but yeah, there was a they had a hell of a lineup of burbits, saber burbits there too. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um Jody, the manager at uh Sabretooth, had mentioned it. Like she was like, I sent them some nice pieces <laughs> to play with. <laughs> Take these home. <laughs> They had to stay on set. <laughs> <laughs> you start taking them in your bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be conscious if I did that. Yeah, I know, right? That's how was that experience being on that show? Nuts. 
it was one of the hardest mentally, physically, emotionally draining programs or anything I've ever done. Uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. There's a lot of good times and a lot of hard times, but it was, uh, it was, it was a heck of an, of an experience. It was pretty cool. What were your time frames for turning around a car? So there was, they had a quick carve and a master carve in each episode. Quick carve okay. was two hours long and there was always a theme behind it. Same with the master carve. Mm -hmm. The master carve was seven hours long. Wow. And I'm not the quickest carver, but I had to pull up my panties in a hurry and catch up with the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep up with everybody, right? Yeah, um, I, le I learned to uh, carve a little faster. <laughs> I was going to say like how, like in comparison, something that you made on the show, how long would it normally take you? Yeah, there were pieces I was carving, you know, in seven hours, I'd probably take two weeks on sometimes, you know, four yeah. weeks. Yeah. It's crazy how when you're under that time crunch, so what you can get done. <laughs> it's inspiring too, because all the other carvers there, I was inspired by all of them because they're absolutely kick-ass carvers, like just phenomenal work. But uh, you watch them and see how fast they go. And it's just, I think the... Uh, I don't know the momentum, the energy. You just absorb that, and you yeah, yeah. same. So I, because for me, I, I get stuck on details all the time. Like I just, I can't. I'm stuck on a spot that big for hours. Sometimes uh -huh. there, you got no choice. You got to let go and move on. I was gonna say, like, it's just got to be fast decision making, right? Like, I'm gonna cut here, 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 block it out, go, and then move on to the next step, and and just commit. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not necessarily like a change that carving competition you know that guy i've yeah. been in a few i've been in a few of them and done okay but it's just that's my challenge for me is to put myself in those intense situations to try to push myself and you learn you grow uh yeah you learn from everything your mistakes and everything it's pretty cool yeah and i'm sure you're gonna take some of those things that you've learned and bring them home now like <laughs> maybe make those like decisions faster now that you've had that under fire pressure oh i know I'm back no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're like, nope, I got home, I got comfortable, and now I just sit there and look at it. It's a different environment. Like, uh, yeah. Not me. I'm not a, you know, head down, ass up, go for eight hours a day at home. It's, I pick at it. <laughs> well, you enjoy it, right? You got to savor each bite. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, right? Until I have to clean up at the end of the day. So, um, just in general, you said you've been in a few of the carving competitions. Yeah, yeah, I've been in a few, not too many. I think maybe seven in, in four years, five years. It has to be good for. I mean, the pressure is probably intense, but like the relationship building, like how you were saying, how now you like you know all these people and you're friends with them, like that has to be like the really nice benefit of going to those. I assume. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the best parts. Everybody's. It's like one big family, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. welcomes you. Yeah. Everybody's willing to help everybody. It's a it's a cool community to be in. Yeah, it seems like it. The more and more I see with everybody with chainsaw art, it's it's for sure a big traveling outdoor family, you know? All it is is a bunch of misfits who finally found their way. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, yeah. That's how I feel like a lot of us are. Like all all of us who make something, like we found something that made us happy and it's, it's a, it's a solitary act, but it also has a community around it. 100%, yeah. I wouldn't change it for the world. It's awesome. For the pieces that you've created, what's something that really stands out to you as, as one of your favorites? I don't really know. I got, there's several, I mean, I can't, not one's on the pedestal by itself, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, I've got, yeah, I've got a handful of them probably. They're all so neat. I mean, you've got a lot done in six years, you said? F five years carving? Five years carving. Five yeah. years? Okay. Yeah, uh, you've done a lot of pieces in that time. I mean, obviously, you're doing it full time, so that's what you're dedicated to. But it's just outstanding, like, the amount that you've kicked out. And I'm sure you don't post everything. Like you said, you you build inventory, so you might be carving repeats on stuff, too. But You know, like, people want little welcome bears or eagles or, you know, owls, that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The wood carvers bread and butter right there you know yeah essentially but this year's been opposite for me i haven't been selling much of that but i've been getting bigger commissions so i don't D during covid it was the other way around i was because everybody was stuck at home mm -hmm. there was nothing but cranking out little bears and owls and yeah you know, that that kind of carbon kind of gets stale to me after a while 
and because I like doing these one-off pieces that that keeps me intrigued a lot and uh, right. you know massive challenges right you must get into a rhythm I assume when it, when you're carving eight owls in a day or something yeah it's kind of brain shuts off and oh, yeah squirrel. yeah <laughs> it's it's when you have to have like a really good playlist or something like do you listen to music or do you just headphones on or i've got my headphones on just an am fm radio in my ears and i listen to local radio stations that's cool so you, yeah you kind of stay in tune to where you live yeah that's right um to get on a cut above how was your auditioning process for that like what did that take i went on for about two years because stop start stop start um, so I think they just reached out to any carver that, that they found online and they mm -hmm. sent you kind of like an application you just filled it up and send it back. And that's kind of how it went. Um, filming was go several times. And I think at one point in time, I'm supposed to be in Toronto. And, uh, so last summer, you know, the messages back and forth, back and forth, you know, I thought, okay, I think I'm going on the show and filming was going to be last fall. There's a dead space for two weeks, and after all these emails, because they ask you, can you be available for this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's dead space, so I said I just emailed and asked them, you know, what, an update or something, and then they sent me a confidentiality form I had to sign, and then they said, no, you didn't make the first season. I went, well, you could, okay, that's fine. Life goes on. Yeah, and and then fast forward to beginning of March, I think it was March fourth, end of the day, I was working, got a phone call from Vancouver, and they asked if I wanted to be on it, and I said. I don't know because I had all these deadlines to do and uh, I phoned I had to, I told one of my clients what was going on and which was which was the Buffalo guy. Oh, okay. So yeah. Supposed to be due down there end of June. And I told him he, and he said yes, go. So I told these guys, Yep, yeah, I'll, I'll come, I guess. And a month later we started filming, beginning of April. That's awesome. To have an accommodating client like that too, who was just like, yeah, No, I, go I, for it. Yeah, if they would have said no, I wouldn't have went. Because it was an important client for myself, um, and I thought it would be it'd be a cool experience to give it a shot, right? Yeah. Why not? Because it might not come around again, and uh, yeah, it way it went. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but the process for the show, like for the people who they cast, and for me, I mean, just for the first season, it was it it was incredible. I mean, just the the vast um diversity of us all right just from different backgrounds and different stories it, it was pretty cool and uh, all different people but we all came together as a big group it was pretty cool was it um everyone from different uh, areas around the world like yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's cool those shows are so influential like influential like look at the the ones that we saw that you know made us interested in this kind of thing so uh, it's it's got to be exciting to know that you are about to inspire a ton of people to pick up like these tools and to go out and play. Like it's going to be exciting. I hope we influence somebody to go do something they love in life. It doesn't have to be carving. Right. Something that's in the back of their head forever and just give it a shot. I, I hope it inspires somebody to do that. Just one person. That's all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be power carving. It can be whatever they're sitting on. I like how you said that. Like, Whatever is just like ticking in the back of your head that you really want to do to go out there and just try it. I mean, yeah, it inspired me and it's it's changed my life. Who would have thought? Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what are your future goals with, with this all? Like continue with what you're doing, trying to expand. Like what, what are your goals with us? Uh, in the long run, I want to do big, cool commissions like this, like in depth, uh, yeah, I want to do big commissions like this. Like, I would love to do that. Like, just big, big one-offs all the time. Uh, yeah. Because this production stuff, it, I do want to see, kind of, you know, get bored and don't get into it. But uh, yeah, I want to do this stuff. I want to you know, do the big, unique ones. Yeah, I want to do them for uh, people's private collections. You know, uh, mm -hmm. companies, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I love the company ideas, like just different places like that. Like you said, like that that buffalo was your second piece for that location or at least for that that company so okay. they develop a relationship with you and now okay we need another one well call ryan you know yeah, that'd be cool yeah that's where i want to go yeah corporate corporate's always awesome mm -hmm. always a battle to get them you know get what you want out of the money because they're, they're pretty good at trying to negotiate but uh, oh i'm sure <laughs> hey, come to a middle and everybody's happy yeah <laughs> 
I mean, pricing is always one of the biggest struggles that we all have. So when you're dealing with a company that's used to that kind of thing too, it's already hard enough to price and value yourself accurately. And then when you're negotiating and that's gotta be tough, but I'm sure you've been learning how to navigate that. Like it's a learned skill for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You learn as you go. Mm -hmm. I, I try to start high, you know, and get down to that middle ground, but sometimes I'll start high and you never hear from them again. <laughs> I know that, that, that exactly. So that's like the scary thing. Like, it's funny that you say that. Cause like, yeah, a lot of people, they really, they want something, but they don't want to pay for it. And it's one right. of those things that you have to start teaching people like, no, this is, I value myself and this is what I'm worth, you know? So exactly. it's tough though. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's kind of like a fine balancing act. Mm -hmm. There's out there who have a name for themselves and they get what they're asking for, right? Like, I agree. When you have established a name for yourself, there's, yeah, people understand going into that situation, like before they even contact them, like this is going to be an expensive purchase, but it's going to be worth it because I'm getting it from this person. You know, knock on wood, I hope I get to that point in my career someday. I feel like you are there, or at least you're about to be there with this show. It's just going to get your name out there even more, you know, like I'm always shocked and I, like follower and count, I know doesn't mean anything, but whenever I look at your page, I assume that you have 30, 40, 50,000 followers because of the quality of work, but you know what I mean? And it's one of those things. It's just that Instagram hasn't shown your stuff to everybody. <laughs> they hide our stuff from everybody, but like, <laughs> yeah, but seriously, like, your work is outstanding and, and, and it always makes it like, it just needs eyes on it. And and I feel like that about a lot of us, you know, it's just like, if only the Instagram God shouldn't some light on us and, you know, showed our stuff to people they would see. And I think at least this show, like the discovery network saw that in you and like they plucked you up and they got you on there. So I'm hoping it gives you some well-deserved attention. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. That's kind of one of the reasons I get it too, right? It's uh, yeah, I couldn't pay for this kind of promotion, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Hopefully, yeah, that that's part of it that gets out there. Yeah, another thing like that show is too. You go on there, you're vulnerable. You, you know, you're vulnerable. You're putting yourself out there. And uh, I watched episode two last night. And I hate watching myself, and it's, some moments were cringeworthy. But uh, yeah, that's one thing people don't see. I mean, you're on there. You're putting yourself out there, whether people like it or not, and uh, yeah, that's probably why I drink beer. <laughs> you got to balance somehow, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, before I let you go, I want to talk about just what are your favorite tools to use when it comes to Sabretooth? Like, what are your favorite kinds of burrs? Or are you, like, are you more of an angle grinder guy? Like, what do you use to get your stuff done? I, I, I use, uh, forgive me for the proper terminology of the type of saber burrs. But no worries triangle one i like to use and it's the orange one the aggressive one oh yeah and that's for the die grinder itself and there's one that's kind of uh, like a cylinder as well mm -hmm. and green one i use mostly and probably what's the other one i use a lot uh geez oh it's like a little pointy one that goes like that that's for the aggressive part and also i have about the same bits i use for my journals as well so i mean I've, I've got a ton of them but there's only maybe eight of them i rotate through right so like uh the one that you're describing i believe is called the bud yes or, that's it yes Thank okay you. yeah yeah no worries i've been studying their website a lot so <laughs> <laughs> whenever i do a video for them for like testing out the different burrs i gotta go on the website find the proper name so i can say it properly so <laughs> I don't know the names. It's like probably somebody looking at diamond. It looks shiny. And yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like, oh no, that's the dovetail. Like I'm. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm starting to get these things down. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we all have our favorites, you know, when it comes to that, and those ones that you trust to get that that done. Yeah, and I also have like a little uh, little mini angle grinder po pocket angle grinder. It's got a two inch round disc on it. Yep. And and I have. Uh, two discs and one's kind of like a very raspy it's purple it's a saber bit too. oh that's the most extreme yeah yeah it's insane yeah I, I, I use it a lot to get a lot of fine detail and my uh i got a 
finger sander as well, an eight, 18 inch belt sander. Uh, oh. three eighths. Yeah. I use that as well. Do you um, use those more aggressive ones because you're using a very hard wood or you just like that it takes off a lot of material fast? I use it because I, I, I carve a lot of green wood, right? Okay. So, and it takes a lot of material off pretty fast on that. And I find the greener wood, well, for me anyways, I can get a lot of detail in it versus sometimes when they dry out, the woods I have, I mean, you get the detail, but they kind of flake off almost a bit more. Okay. Kind of. Yeah, I've been hearing people who are using green wood that it doesn't gum up as much if you use a more aggressive burr because there's more spacing and it gives the wood somewhere to escape when it's when you're using the tool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, so that, no, that's a good note for anybody who's getting, like, I'm trying if they're listening and they're wanting to get into this kind of carving. I want to give people as many tips and tricks to get them ahead in the game, you know, so <laughs> so they don't have to struggle and buy say they bought all the extra fine whispers and it's like the wrong tool to use in a situation you know yeah i bought all a lot of fine ones and i don't use them because they just gum up right mm -hmm. yeah I, I use them sometimes like if, if i laminate a project together like the planks right i'll use them for that but uh, yeah not for not for trees yeah yeah they're outstanding for a dry wood but yeah you're gonna get in there it's, it's the wrong tool is there any other tip or trick that you'd give to somebody who just wants to be getting out with uh, chainsaw carving and using burrs? Uh, experiment. Experiment with all your tools. Um, I've actually had, I've made, uh, made my own tools too, homemade tools. Uh, and Google. Use yeah. Google advantage. Uh, Google what you like, like uh, bears, whatever, fur patterns, and see if you can try to figure out how they did it in your own style. And You'll be surprised how much you'll catch on, and then all of a sudden you evolve into your own style. I mean, yeah. not the same, but that's kind of how I did it, and that's the only advice I can get on that. But yeah, just uh, put your heart and soul into it, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. And is there um, anything that you want to promote besides the show that you have coming up? I'll be in, I'll be in Libby, Montana, September eighth to eleventh or twelfth for their uh, annual International Chainsaw Carving Competition. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's the next one coming up. And what, then the weekend after that, I'll be down in oh my God, Indiana for a, uh, an event called Block Bash. And what, and what is that? It, it, it's an insane event. That's It's it's ran by a company called Bear Hollow. Okay. And I have like top of the top chainsaw carvers there that do this. And they kind of carve all over the country in the U.S. And I've been invited this year as an international guest to join the team. So... Pretty nerve wracking to be a bunch of they get be up against these guys because a lot of them are very fast and very detailed. So again, that's a place I'll have to pick it up. But I feel pretty <laughs> feel pretty honored to get invited down there. That's awesome, dude. Like what incredible opportunities, you know, for starting off something, like we said, a labor of passion and now like all these other things that come with it. That's so cool. Thanks for coming on. I know Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, I hope you enjoyed getting to know Ryan. He is so talented and he was a really fun person to hang out with for an hour. I hope you guys go check out all of his amazing artwork and I want to talk about something that's coming up that's super exciting. Myself and Sadie Mae from the Awesome Orange are going to be heading on over to the Catskills of New York and there is going to be Makers Camp. It's the first weekend in October and it's going to be a ton of fun. So. I have gone there a few times now. I've been to their Hammer Inn and I went to last year's Makers Camp and it's a lot of fun. It's all outdoors. Um, we're gonna be in a tent. There's gonna be a ton of other brands there and it's super hands-on. So you can come and we'll play and we can have demos and uh, competitions with power carving. And then you can go check out all the other tents and uh, it's gonna be a really good time. We're gonna have some amazing hardwoods to play with. We have two awesome sponsors, Miller's Rustic Sawmill and Forest to Home are bringing us some great wood to play with. So if you're in the area or you wanna make a special trip, I definitely recommend coming out to the, Sc the Catskill Maker Camp. It is seriously an amazing time. So can't wait to see everyone there. And uh, in the meantime, keep on carving.